the land far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling on that first together let's all stand as we sing two one six together on that first far away the noise of strife upon my ear tonight. Good to see you back in church this evening. Had a good morning this morning, didn't we? Even though we got some folks still out traveling from the weekend and such, but uh, good to see you here this evening and uh, looking forward to a good service tonight. Had I think we had eight, eight visitors here this morning and uh, on a holiday weekend, that's a good thing. And uh, it was a blessing to, to see that. And uh, the one uh, young lady, um, uh, kind of assurance of salvation, she was saved when she was 18 years of age. And uh, needs to be baptized, and uh, you, Miss Taylor, dealt with her, and she, you got through. By the way, I talked to her out in the car, and she said, "I got baptized, but that was before I was saved, so that didn't mean anything." <laughs> that's what she told me. So she says, "I need to get baptized," and I said, "That's good," and uh, so we got it, and she was happy, and uh, we're looking forward to Marcia uh, being baptized, and uh, that'll be an exciting time. So uh, thanks for being back in church this evening, and let's open with prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, we bow before you now tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of the morning hour, for you working in our midst and speaking to our hearts. And we pray now that once again this evening, you'll do the same. Uh, meet with us, speak to us, and the best we know, we yield ourselves to you here at the beginning of the service, Lord, and uh, help us to, through the, through the songs, through the fellowship together, through the preaching of the word of God, that you'll minister to our hearts tonight, Lord. Uh, do, do the work in us and mold us and shape us and conform us more to the image of Jesus Christ because we were here this evening. May you control the service and make it exactly what you would like it to be. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. amen. All right. You may be seated. Turn with me. Will. 
and Jesus, everything to me. He's a lily of found a friend. some announcements and uh, regular schedule this week now, Wednesday night for the midweek service, and uh, we'll turn the calendar on, uh, let's see, Tuesday, go to December, the last month of the year, isn't that amazing, and it uh, goes by quick, and uh, the month of December, our theme is faithfulness, faithfulness, and we'll be uh, dealing with that subject, and uh, we'll look forward to a great month of December, a lot happening in the month of December, and uh, excited about all the things that are available for us and uh, that the Lord will do here. So Wednesday night for the service here, uh, Thursday night uh, at the CRC uh, prison, and uh, pray for that ministry. Friday night for our you right here at church. Uh, Saturday morning, men's breakfast, so sign up for that, fellas. And I uh, have uh, decorating the church, some of you ladies and, and some of the men want to help with that. Uh, that's sign up down there as well. And uh, then we'll have our soul winning and bus visitation as usual at 10, 10 a.m. down in the uh, conference room where we usually meet. And uh, it'll take us right on into the next Sunday. All right. So uh, we're ready to go. And I uh, hope you'll be make yourself available for all the activities that'll be coming up. Check your bulletin for what's coming up. A reminder of the Christmas banquet at Dear Dutchman uh, on the 14th. And uh, we hope you'll make plans to be there for that. That's always an enjoyable night together. And uh, you can see Carol Coleman for your reservations for that and uh, payment with her uh, right after the service. Okay? All right. We'll take just a moment. Anybody here tonight for the first time looking around to see if we have anybody visiting? I don't think so. Just the home folk here this evening. All right. Let's take a minute. We'll hear from our choir. Thank you. 
satisfied with just a cottage but I've got a mansion just over the hill top eight nine mansion over the hilltop we're going to sing all three stanzas Let's turn over one more page. What a day that will be. What a day, glorious day that will be. Let's all stand together as we sing. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears. 
Another, make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. Let's sing that last together. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day. chorus without the instruments. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me
great singing. You may be seated. All right. What a day that'll be, huh? Well, let's ask the Lord's blessing on our offering tonight and uh, give as God has blessed you and prospered you. And uh, we'll ask Brother Bill McKeon to lead us in our prayer this evening. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many provisions and all the provisions you give to us, Lord. Uh, the many bless blessings you bestow upon us. Lord, uh, bless the gift and the giver. And uh, bless the message this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, please, and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Three verses that we're going to read together this evening. Verse 11, I'll read verse 12, and then we'll end reading verse 13 together. And that'll be our text verse for this evening. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 11, 12, and 13. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the Scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Ready? Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful music tonight, and we thank you, Lord, for the people of God that are in this place. And Lord, we bow here as we will have the special and then we come to the preaching of your word. And once again, Lord, we ask that you would speak to our hearts and that our hearts would be good soil that the word of God would fall into. Lord, uh, help us to be in tune with you. Help our minds to be stayed on thee and use the special, Lord, to help us to that end. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and
so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, his child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing, for I cannot be silent, his love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, I'm redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, his child and forever. How I love to proclaim it, his child and forever I am. Our Father, we bow in prayer as we come to the preaching of your word. And Lord, I pray that you will help us this evening to listen carefully to what the Spirit would say to his church tonight. I thank you again, Lord, for each one who's made their way back to the service this evening. Thank you for people who will make it not just the Lord's morning, but the Lord's day. Amen. Father, we're asking you now as we bow before you in prayer, as we open up the only book you've ever written, that you would speak to our hearts through your word tonight and give help to, the, to each of us this evening as we face what happens to all of us as we go along this journey called life. And I pray, Lord, you'd give us help as we bring the message and help each one as they listen. May your will be done in our lives in these next few moments together. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. <clears throat> There's a great truth, and most of you are familiar with verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We all have the same temptations. I said this morning it could it happens to all of us, and what happens to all of us is temptation. Temptations. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. There's no temptation that takes you that hasn't also happened to somebody else. There's no burden that you carry that someone else hasn't also carried the same burden. There's no heartache that you feel or experience but that someone else has carried that heartache or experience also. You're not special. Sorry. Uh, you listen to, you'll have to listen to Joel Olstein to get that message. Um, the, the truth is, uh, you're not the only one in the battle. You're not the only one facing temptations. You're not the only one that has struggles. You're not the only one that, that's having a tough time. All right? Uh, we always close the radio broadcast with, be good to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. By the way, just let me put this aside here. Uh, we do have a radio program, all right? And uh, it's amazing. As Sandra said, I think a couple weeks ago, uh, one of the visitors that was here was a radio listener, and she found out about the radio program. And uh, uh, it's, uh, we got a phone call from somebody passing through on Thanksgiving Day, and uh, he called the number. Just say he was passing from Cleveland to Dayton for Thanksgiving, and he picked up the broadcast. And uh, it was a real blessing to him. And uh, he called to say so. And uh, that's a blessing. So uh, 9.45 in the morning, 11.15 at night. Uh, occasionally, they play us at 6.45 in the evening as well. And uh, God's doing some good things with that. The other thing that I'd like you to do, those of you who are active on social media, you ought to, you ought to know we have a Facebook page, Bible Baptist Church. Uh, look that up. We have a Reformers Unanimous page. Look that up. Uh, we're going to be utilizing more of that in the next year. And uh, you ought to know it's there, and you ought to uh, uh, let other folks know it's there. And uh, also about the live stream uh, of the broadcast, I got my mom set up on that finally, uh, up in her place, and uh, so she can watch if she wants to. And uh, no, I'm not going to say hi, Mom, all right? But um, <laughs> we let her be able to do that and uh, be part of the services. So... Uh, if, Help us with that. Uh, that would be that would be great. All right. So uh, temptation. 
uh, everyone, every one of us will, will come through the temptation. Now, someone said there's three common temptations that we all have. Uh, that is, uh, and this isn't part of the sermon or anything, but, or outline, but uh, we have three common temptations. One is to recline. That is, we want to just rest and not do anything. Uh, be lazy. There's a reason they call the recliner a lazy boy, okay? There is a reason for behind that, all right? And then the, the second temptation is to shine. That means we want to brag and toot our own horn and uh, let everybody else know everything we do. Uh, but the third temptation is to whine, uh, complain about what we have to do and, and grumble and uh, gripe. So you recline or you shine or you whine. Uh, that may be pretty close to the truth. But I want to give you three simple truths this evening uh, about temptations. That which can happen to us all. And the first one is this. Temptation is common. Temptations are common. Uh, our example, is, of course, is Jesus Himself. When He came and lived on this earth and took upon Him uh, the form of a man, the Bible says He was, in Hebrews 4.15, He was tempted in all points, like as we are. So he knew what it was to be tempted. And by the way, it's important to know, he was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. All right? Uh, it is never a sin to be tempted. Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. It is a sin when you yield to the temptation and you give in to the temptation, which Jesus never did. Abraham was tempted to lie. When he went down to Egypt in the time of the famine, and he said, uh, he told Sarah, you, you lie to them and tell them that you're my sister. You're not my wife. And so he was yielded, he, he yielded to that temptation, and he lied about his wife. Samson yielded to the temptation of Delilah, and he sold out his Nazarite vow to God, the secret of his power, like temptations, common temptations. Peter, always mentioned first in the list of the disciples, or even when it's the inner circle of the three, Peter would always be mentioned first. And uh, always, the, always the one who really was a spokesperson for the apostles. And yet he got angry and lost his temper with a little girl while he was warming his hands at their fire. And he cursed and he swore and denied that he knew the Lord. Common temptations that you and I might face. Noah uh, was 120 years a preacher of righteousness. And he got his own house saved. Don't even know the whole rest of the world perished. He got eight. He got his sons and their wives and his wife. And he got them in the ark. That's a great testimony. But after he got done with all that and he got out and they began to live again, uh, he got drunk. And, and, and yielded to the temptation of the liquor. Listen, some are tempted by liquor. Some are tempted to lie like Abraham did. Some are tempted to curse like Peter did. Some are tempted to be immoral like Samson was. Some are tempted to be proud like Job was. Some are tempted to lose their temper like Moses was. Some are tempted to complain like Israel did. Some are tempted by money like Balaam was. There's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It was Bob Jones Sr. used to say, God only has crooked sticks to use. In other words, you're waiting for everybody to be, everything to be perfect, never be lined up. Uh, God doesn't have many sticks like that. But thank God He uses crooked ones. And that's you and me. I get mighty discouraged if I went to the Bible and all I found there were perfect people. That would be, that'd be a mighty discouraging thing. And I would look at that and say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not qualified and God certainly would never be able to use me. Uh, too many things that have happened in my life and, and things where I've failed the Lord and, 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 and had to ask His forgiveness and, and had to go to Him and ask for His mercy. And, and He wouldn't ever use me. But the great heroes of the Bible... The people we look at in the Word of God and sometimes we elevate them and we put them up on pedestals and they were great men and women of faith, but they were men and women. They were, they were just like you and me. And oftentimes we, we think, well, yeah, God will use those people in the Bible and God will do great things with them, but He never do that for me. 
Oh, yes, my friend, he'll do it for you, and he'll do it for me. And so they face the same, same temptations that you and I face. Same temptations, same problems, same troubles. Years ago, I had a young Christian. Oh, this was, this was 30 years ago. And they said, you know, when, when will I become a good enough Christian? That uh, She said, and, and this was a lady, and she was saying, you know, like uh, she mentioned Dr. Hiles and uh, Dr. Rice, and she mentioned uh, Tom Malone, and she goes, when will I be a good Christian like them and I won't be tempted anymore? And, uh, and I, had to, I hated to burst her balloon, uh, but I had to tell her the truth. You're never going to have a day when you're not going to face temptation." You're not going to have any time where you're not going to be facing the, the temptations that come. But <clears throat> listen, our cry, our cry is not free from attack. Our cry is victory. Victory. Hey, to get victory, you've got to have a battle. To get victory, you've got to have an opponent. To get victory, you've got to win the struggle. Or there's no victory. And so we understand that there's victory. The... Same fears, the same temptations, the same struggles, the same disagreements, same frustrations, same weaknesses. Someone said this, think how many temptations you can face in an ordinary day. Staying in bed late, the temptation to laziness. Growling at the breakfast table, the temptation to unkindness. Arguing over who should change the baby this time. The temptation to selfishness. Starting work ten minutes late. The temptation to slothfulness. Losing your temper when a co-worker crashes your computer. The temptation to impatience. Flirting with that good-looking woman or taking a second look at the good-looking man. The temptation to lust. Refusing to speak to a person who's hurt you. The temptation to malice. Repeating a juicy story of your neighbor's shortcomings, the temptation to gossip, laying awake at night thinking sensual thoughts, the temptation to impurity, taking your anger out on the children after a hard day, the temptation to cruelty, going out to eat when you cannot afford it, the temptation to self-indulgence, having a second helping and then a third helping, the temptation to gluttony, well we shouldn't say that after Thanksgiving, should we? Firing off a hasty letter to someone who hurt you. The temptation to revenge. Those are all things, that, that temptations we could face in one day. And, and, and understand something. Don't, don't think, oh, the devil likes you to think, oh, no one's ever been through what I'm going through. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they have. We like to think, oh, nobody's ever had it this tough. Nobody's ever been through what I've been through. I talked to someone the other day who's, who's just got out of, I think, couple months in a rehab facility because of prescription drugs and she goes well I've just I've just no one's had to deal with all the loss that I've had to deal with and name the different ones who've passed away in her family I thought you know what everybody everybody's experienced that those things and then the thought came to my mind just exactly what this this message was listen I, I want to say <laughs> there's no temptation taking you but such as is common to man you know People, if the Lord tarries, we've lost, we have one parent. My mom is still living. My dad's in heaven. Kathy's mom and dad are in heaven. They're gone. And my mom's 89. She's soon to be there. But who knows? I may get there before she does. We don't know. And so you don't know. We don't understand. But listen, death, separation, loss of loved ones, that's part of life. That is the cycle of life. And we all go through that. That's common. We have common temptations. Common temptations. The second thing I want you to notice this evening is this. There's common help. There's common help. The Bible says in, Roman, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Boy, that's a great four words right there, isn't it? And here's what he's faithful. He will not suffer you. That word means he's not going to allow you to be tempted above that ye are able. He will not tempt you. He won't allow you to be tempted above that ye are able. Listen, the temptation, let's make sure we understand something. God 
any temptation that we have is not from God, but it is allowed by God. James chapter 1 says, God does not tempt any man. He doesn't tempt us with evil. The temptation is always to do evil, and if that's a temptation to do evil, it's not from God. The one who tempts us to do evil is Satan. He, he or, you know, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In fact, look there, would you? Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Hold your finger there in 1 Corinthians 10 or put a piece of paper in there and we're going to come back to 1 Corinthians 10. But look with me at Ephesians chapter 6, would you please? Because we mentioned this morning about, about our, uh, the, that the enemy, real enemy is you, okay? And that's not, I'm not minimizing our enemy the devil, but he's only one. And you say, well, how does he get so much done if there's just one of him? Well, here's how it happens. In verse number 12, he says, we wrestle not, Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We have, we have Satan, and then he has principalities. He has princes. Princes are rulers over a certain territory. Uh, the prince of Wales, the prince of some other region. And so you have those princes. And so Satan has his princes. I believe he has princes set up over certain regions, areas of the world. And then underneath those princes, notice it says, then he has powers. So he has people underneath them that are just powers, authorities, if you will. So you have the, the princes that are more of a regions, and then you have the powers that are over a little more centralized areas. They're authorities that would be over uh, those areas, and then the rulers of darkness of this world. Then those, those uh, uh, powers, they have rulers. They have people that follow them. They're, they're, the leaders always have to have followers or you're not a leader. And so you have the, this is the demonic uh, hierarchy, demonic chain of command, so to speak. And you have Satan heading it up, and then he has the princes, and then he has the, 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 the powers, and he has the rulers underneath that. And, and we're facing this this host of demonic forces. And that's what he does. And what does he do? He tries to, to tempt Christians. He tries to get you off the path. Now, look at James chapter 1, would you please? James chapter 1. Here's where the Bible says, notice verse 13. James 1 and verse 13. The Bible says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted. It happens to us all. Every man is tempted. How does it happen? When he is drawn away of his own lust, lusts are just strong desires, drawn away of his own desires and enticed. And then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Now, we know from, from these verses here, he, we, we have desires, we have, uh, and by the way, not all desires need to be fulfilled. Uh, some desires can be fed, some desires have to be suppressed, and other desires have to be completely starved in everyone's life. And you have to just die to some things and say, That's, I'm not doing that at all. I'm staying away as far away from that as I can. I'm dying to that. That's, that I'm crucifying the flesh with the affections thereof, okay, the desires thereof. And so he says, you have those, the, those desires that come. And then it says, when lust hath conceived. Well, first of all, notice in verse 14, he says, we're drawn away of his own lust and enticed. We're, the devil likes to draw us away. What's he drawing us away from? He's drawing us away from the path of following God. The, the devil does not care what else you do as long as you don't do what God wants you to do. The devil doesn't have a certain will for your life. His will is simply anything but God's will. It doesn't matter what else you go. And if he can get you to follow your own lusts and follow your own desires, and he'll lay those traps out there for you so you can see them and, and you think, boy, that looks good. Or, boy, that and, and those desires. And what happens is, now you think about this, and what happens is when the Bible says there that lust, when it's conceived, and, you know, uh, conception is a couple, con conceiving or conception has something to do with the reproduction, but it's another word that's used here for conceived, and it really means, it means framed in your mind. It means that, that, that desire, you begin to dwell on it, 
and you begin to frame in your mind how you can make that happen. Hmm? That's what happens. And that's how, when that takes place, and you're framing it up, trying to figure out how I can make this come to pass, then the Bible says here, when it hath conceived, when it gets framed in your mind, it's going to bring forth sin. Once you begin to think it, you're going to do it. You, you, that's why the Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin. You've got to cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, what you know to be true about God, and you cast it out. Don't dwell on it. Don't frame it in your mind. You see, that's how, that's how the temptation works. But I want you to notice there's common help that the Lord gives us. He said, there's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you. He's not going to allow you to be tempted above that ye are able. Now, listen carefully. This is not God putting some, some burdens on you. Somebody says, God will never give you more than you can handle. That's not what that verse says. God will give you more than you can handle, so you will learn to look to Him. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Uh, he wants you to rely on His strength, not your strength. And sometimes God will put so much on you, He'll see it, just show you how feeble you are and how you can't carry the load. You have to have Him. That's why He gave you the Holy Spirit. But that's not what this is talking about. Here he's talking about temptation, the allurement, the luring you off the path where, where, where the, 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 your lust will want you to, to be drawn away from following him. God says, I'm, I'm never going to allow Satan to lure you off the path. I'm never going to allow him to give you temptation more than you can bear. That's the promise of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You're not going to be tempted above that year, Abel. You ever see, uh, in fact, uh, Dave Paxton, most of you know who Dave, Brother Dave is, drives a, a truck, not a semi, but a smaller box truck and hauls loads all across the country. I talked to him the other day. He's, he was in Texas, heading for Laredo, Texas, I think, for Thanksgiving. And um, he was uh, from somewhere, Florida, Louisiana, somewhere over there. And, um, and, and you know, he's, he's always concerned about the weight that he has on his truck. In fact, some trucks will say there's a load limit for this truck. And uh, there's a load limit. You know what God says to each one of us? You know what he says to Satan as the temptation comes? He says there's a load limit on this guy. There's only so much you can do, and that's it. And he, has no, he knows the load limit. So I know that whatever the temptation is, that, that there's, always, he's always, there's always a way to bear it. He said, I won't suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Above that ye are able. And, and you think that, that I, I, I just can't handle this. Yes, you can. I just can't, I, I couldn't help it. Yes, you could. God said you could. And you, you, you have common help. Listen. Remember who he's writing to. The church of Corinth. Are these mature Christians? No, they're baby Christians. In fact, they weren't just baby Christians, they were carnal Christians. They were, they were following their flesh, following their desires, following what they want, what they think, and what they feel, doing what they wanted. And so he's trying to help them in this matter of temptation. And, and by the way, God helped Abraham, and Abraham won the victory. God, God helped Noah, and Noah won the victory. God helped Job, and Job won the victory. God helped Peter, and Peter won the victory. And Peter ended up preaching 50 days later at Pentecost. And so, the, the same, listen, the, 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 the key words there about not God not allowing more than we can bear is those four words that we paused at, God is faithful. That's three words, isn't it? But God is faithful. I think I left the but out, didn't I? But God is faithful. And so, there's, the, the, that's the key to getting the common help. It's God. God is faithful. And what God, listen, what God had for, for those folks in the Old Testament, He has for you and me. God
God's the same. He doesn't change. Huh? If they look to Him for help then and received help, can't we look to Him and receive help? If God heard their prayers, won't He hear our prayers? If God listened to them when they called upon Him, if God protected them, would He not protect us? If God took care of them, would He not take care of us? God has not changed. And God is no respecter of persons. So there's help. God will not allow your load limit to be exceeded. He won't allow you to be tempted above that ye are able. Now here's the third thing. And this goes with the common help. There's a common escape. It's common temptation. There's a common help. But there's a common escape. Notice what he says. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. A way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The word escape is a word that means to shun danger or to, to avoid or be secure from danger. Well, is there a way I can be secure from danger? What's the danger? Giving into temptation. That's always the danger. How can I be secure from that? How can I avoid that? How can I escape that? God says there's a way to escape. There's a way to end the temptation. And I would submit to you that that way is not something. It's someone. It's not a what. It's a who. And the who is Jesus Christ. Why? He has the victory. Thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul was saying in Romans 7 when he said, Oh, wretched man that I am! Who should deliver me from the body of this death? What was his struggle in Romans 7? Man, I do what I don't want to do. And what I, what I ought to do, I'm not doing. Man, he had that war going on. He said, man, this is awful. I yield to temptation all the time. Man, why am I doing this? He said, oh, I've got the answer. The answer isn't something, it's someone. It's Jesus Christ. He's the answer. He has the victory. He carries the burden. And He gives the power to overcome and resist temptation. I don't have to yield if I look to Christ to help me. He was tempted at all points like I am, yet without what? Sin. He's, he's undefeated. He's, he's never lost. He's never been upset. Never, never. He's always got the victory. So I don't have to have a burden. I don't have to fall under the burdens. He carries the burdens for me. I don't, I don't, I don't need to take pills to go to sleep at night because He gives His beloved sleep. You know, unto you, uh, um, unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I'm told that that, that word peace there, the Prince of Peace, is the same word from which we get our word tranquilizer. So, What's the tranquilizer for the believer? Jesus Christ. He's the peace. He's the peace. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Don't count sheep. Talk to the shepherd. That'll, that'll put you to sleep. Huh? Hey, he gives his beloved sleep. My, 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 my question is, when, when we have believers who are, who are uh, and I'm not, against, I'm not just preaching against taking any kind of medication, any kind of pills. Obviously, sometimes you need things. But listen, where's, our, where's, where's, where's the difference Christ makes? Where's our testimony that, that God allows these things to come into our life? Do you ever think God, it rains on the just and the unjust? Why does God let that happen? To show how we handle it, how a Christian handles it compared to a lost person. Don't you think? But oftentimes, we're, we're doing just whatever the lost person does. We handle it just the way they handle it. And we end up, listen, 
the vast majority of the, I, I'm sure we've crossed 400 that have come through our U program in the four years plus that we've had it. The vast majority, I, I'd, I'd almost say 95% easily, are safe people. They're not lost. Every now and then you have someone come through who's lost and you get a chance to, to lead them to the Lord. But it's not been that many. Probably in the last year I could probably count on one hand that Bob's come and got to lead to Christ. It's not that they're not Christians. It's that, and, and you think then, no wonder, no wonder we're having such a little impact on the world. They're, they're, they're not seeing any difference. They're not seeing anything different in us than, than what they, how they handle it. And so he's saying, hey, it's, it's the common escape. It's Jesus Christ. It's, it's your knowing the Prince of Peace. Let's look at Peter and uh, Luke 22. Would you go there, please? Luke 22. Are you doing all right? We won't be long. Luke 22. This is the account of Peter and the denial, his denial of Christ. Look with me, if you will, at verse 54. Luke 22 and verse 54. And they took him and led him and brought him into the priest's house. Now that's Jesus. And notice these words, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, the, while he yet spake, the cock crew. Now look at this. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto them, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Don't you wish Peter would have looked at that window earlier? Think you ever thought about that? Could he have looked at that window before he denied him? Could he have looked up there and saw Jesus before he even sat down among the enemies? He should have. Why? That was his way of escape. But he didn't take it. You think about it, you be honest. Most of the time, when we have yielded to temptation, we have seen the look of Jesus, we have seen the stop signs of, uh, that He puts in our way, and we blow through them anyway. And we do what we want to do, we say what we want to say, we just plow right on through. The way of escape is the Lord Jesus Himself. I'm sure He wished He'd have looked earlier. He could have resisted that temptation. I believe that. I believe he would have got out of there is what I believe. You know, don't lose your awareness of Christ. Anytime we sin, we lose the awareness that Christ is with us. That he's right there. This past weekend, I forget what day it was. I heard some noise in the other room and I walked into the room where the grandchildren were. Micah and Jenna. Micah's four, Jenna's six. Jenna's six or seven? She's six, I think. They were squabbling about something. I walked around the room and they stopped. I said, is there a problem here? No. Uh -uh. Everything's good. I said, okay, just checking. How many parents have experienced that before? Yeah. Now here's the thing, we're not always there, but when they realized I was there and I heard them, 
it stopped it right there. Where's, where's Jesus when you decide to sin? He's right there, isn't he? But we lose the awareness that he's there. Oh, that we'd be aware that he's with us. Oh, that we wouldn't lose that awareness. He's a very present help in time of trouble if we'll look to him, if we'll call out to him, and we'll, we'll rely upon him. Someone said when temptation knocks, you send Jesus to answer the door. Let him fight the battle for you. Don't get overconfident. Don't think, I'll never do that. I'll never, I'll never do that again, or I'll never go here again. Be careful. Sometimes we have to uh, help folks with the RU program. Because they get some victory and they get some success, and they say, oh, I'm never doing that anymore. You know, say, by the grace of God, I'm never going to do that anymore. Did you, notice, did you notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, back where we started, 1 Corinthians 10, Did you notice right before verse 13? Right before ver verse 13 is verse 12. Seems like a good place to put 12 right before 13. And wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. It's interesting the placement of that verse. Isn't it? Right before he talks about the temptation. So be careful. Remember it was Peter who said, yeah, everybody else may deny it, but not me, buddy. I never will. Now, how'd that work for you, Peter? You got humbled by it, didn't you? So be careful. And make sure you know that it's not in your strength. You're not the way to escape. Jesus is the way to escape. He's the one that has the ability. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. He's the way of escape. So we're all going to face temptations. We're all going to face the frustrations. We're all going to face the having people say things that are unkind or be critical or whatever it may be that we, we come across. And not only will we be tempted to do it, but folks will do it to us and we'll be tempted to react to that and get ourselves in the flesh. Common temptations, common help, but a common escape. And his name is Jesus. You know, someone said, let Christ master you and you will master temptation. Let Christ master you and you will master temptation. And let me help you. I think it's Brother Currington who said, when you think about all that demonic force that Satan has, he has the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the followers, he has all these folks that are lined up to try to get us off path. He said, and we think we don't have time to get up and read the Bible in the morning? We think we can just go out and face the day with, with no prayer, no reliance on God, not, not asking for his help at all? No wonder we're such easy prey. No wonder it's such easy for, for Satan to have his way with us and to lure us off that path. Common temptation, common help, a common escape. Victory in Jesus, our Savior forever. Let's pray. Shall we, Father, take the truth now this evening. And Father, I pray that you'd help us to understand we're all going to face the temptations, but that it's common temptation. Lord, don't, don't let us think that no one's ever been through what we're going through. And even if we don't know anybody Physically, we know that the Son of God, our Savior, was tempted at all points like as we are, yet without sin. Help us to be confident, Lord, that it's common temptation. Help us to be confident that there's common help, that there's a load limit, that we are able to bear it and to go to the way of escape. And the way of escape is the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.
Father, I pray twofold this evening. I pray that no one in this room, I pray any that are in this room that are, that are being lured off the path, they've, they begin to frame sin and frame wrongdoing in their mind. They begin to picture and think about how it can happen and how they can do it. But God, they drop to their knees tonight and ask for you to help them. They would cast out that imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. They'd bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That We would allow you to master us that we might master temptation. That we might be the right testimony to this world of the power that's in Jesus Christ, our Savior. So please, Lord, help those who are framing sin in their mind, thinking about yielding to temptation. And then God, help us to avoid temptation altogether. Help us not to think we can handle it. Help us to flee temptation. Not put those opportunities and temptation in the same place. And Father, use the message in the hearts of your people, please. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. I wonder how many believers here tonight would say, Preacher, the Spirit of God stopped at my seat this evening. And he's spoken to my heart about this matter of temptation. I want you to pray for me tonight, preacher. Here's my hand. Would you slip it up for a moment? God bless you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. God has dealt with your heart. Now you respond to him. Get the victory. Victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. We sing victory in Jesus. Well, don't make that just songs you sing. Make it a life you live. Common temptation, common help, common escape. Go to the one who can help you. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation now. Thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight. If, if all of us are honest, it helps all of us because we all face temptation. And Lord, it helps to remind us that you're with us, that you're faithful, and that you do provide a way of escape in the Lord Jesus himself. So help us to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We might finish well. Have your way in this invitation now. May each one do what you're telling them to do in their heart. It's in Jesus' name I ask it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob will sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. That's right. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace through death into life everlasting he passed and we follow him there over us sin no more hath dominion for more than conquerors we are turn your eyes upon Jesus look for things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace 
His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Sing it with him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Father, we thank you now for meeting with us tonight. Thank you, Lord, for helping us for encouraging us with the wonderful promises from 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Lord, we love you. We love the word of God you've given to us. And I pray you'd help us to walk with you this week. Make us mindful. Make us aware of your presence with us. Lord, I pray that other people will see Christ in our lives. They'll see a difference that Jesus makes as we live day by day. Use us to influence others for him and point other folks to Jesus. Thank you again for the faithfulness of the people of God here. Be with uh, other uh, folks here, Lord, who are traveling home, our, our members traveling from different places and coming home from the holiday. Watch over them and bring them home safely to us, please. And then give us a, a good week, Father, for thee. Thank you for a wonderful Lord's Day together. Dismiss us now with your care. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together, shall we? It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You're dismissed.